and uh, I have a gentleman on the phone that has graced our airwaves a couple of times and you, you talk about a gracious person, you talk about an iconic voice, an unmistakable voice, every time you hear that song it, it just, you know, boom, you know who it is, you don't have to guess who the man's name is. And he's just a huge contributor to the baby boom of the middle 60s. And it's always great to hear this gentleman come on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, further ado, I'm very humbled and I'm very honored to have this gentleman on our show here tonight, Mr. Mel Carter. How are you, Mel? Uh, I'm good, Ned. I, I was waiting for that guy to come on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here you are. <laughs> yeah. No, you've been Thank such you. a gracious for, for for your comments. I appreciate that. You've been such a gracious friend here to WALN and to and to my show. Of course, you're on YouTube as well. So uh, all the other interviews we had with you, uh, if you go to YouTube, you go to Ned Richards WALN and just scroll down, and there's Mel Carter, and and they can listen to uh, our first two interviews. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. Yes, yes, it's I on. That out. Yes. So it'll be there forever. You and I will be enshrined forever long after there we're we gone. Are there we are. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mel, so glad to hear from you. Thank you so much for, for joining us here tonight. Uh, a lot of, we have a lot of new listeners, and, uh, you know, what I want to do is, is, you know, just briefly go over your illustrious career. When you started, uh, at what age, what brought you on to become a singer? Uh... Uh, a singer so that I you know what I gotta tell you something and this is really a true story I hate people that say this is a true story set it up uh, when I was a kid uh, my uh, when you were around the adults and everything like that and they used to hand out nickels and dimes right okay, I figured out then I could sing and if I sang for them I got quarters <laughs> 50 cents that's that's the truth <laughs> Wow. Well, that, you know, what's a good way to make money? And I guess that was your, uh, your, your, your message. That was your thing. Um, if, we talk about, if we talk about the professional thing, it's when I left uh, uh, Cincinnati uh, in 1957 and I uh, got to the West Coast and, and uh, hooked up with uh, Sam Cooke because I knew Sam Cooke. Uh, uh, in Chicago when I was singing gospel uh, and uh, went to his label and the uh, I, no actually it was 1959 when uh, I had a record I Need You So uh, on Doris Day's label okay. interesting and after that went to Sam and Sam I, I was Sam Cook's protege so in 1963, he wrote a song called When a Boy Falls in Love. Mm -hmm. And the people at the company, there was nobody at the company who could sing as many words to a phrase as Sam could, and I, but me. And so I got the song, When a Boy Falls in Love. And that was my uh, second national hit, but the first thing that broke through the uh, English invasion uh, then when they had all the uh, English records at the top of the charts. And uh, When a Boy Falls in Love broke through. Very good. I mean, we do play that. We get requests for that every now and then as well. Um, when you say gospel music, so many, so many performers got their start singing gospel music. Yes, yes. I, I think it's only, it was a natural thing that we all, you know, our parents uh, raised us up in the, uh, I'm, I'm a Baptist, uh, and we sang in the youth choir, and then you grew up at the young adult choir, and uh, then there were those uh, sat Wednesday nights, Wednesday nights over in Walnut Hills at the uh, Y, and uh, we had dances, you know, and the guys used to go, uh, you know, gather around and do the actual doo-wop singers. Uh, oh, the students, 
uh, and I can't mm -hmm. I can't remember the other guy's name right now, but uh, uh, from Cincinnati that we used to we used to street corner uh, harmonize together at the dances. You know, that's where it first started. So you are doo wop then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't consider myself as. I know you don't, but no. but you know it, it's. That's what we used to do, man. That's that's exactly what we used to do. You know, like that was a way. That was a way to get the girls. Exactly. When you could harmonize and oh, you know, and you see all the girls come over and stand. Oh, you know, like you could do. You could get over, even over the 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 the, the athletes. You could get over them because you you were at the dance and you were harmonizing, you know. And you were on stage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you need a bodyguard, I'm available. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then and then you know, where from that point, where did your career go? Well, from uh, after Sam, uh, uh, we. There was a year, maybe a year and a half, a couple of years, and uh, uh, in between, well, we had uh, the When a Boy Falls in Love, then we had the album, and there were a couple of singles from there. And uh, that, uh, after that, uh, Imperial Records uh, uh, signed me, and we had a record called The Richest Man Alive, which was bubbling under. And then uh, in 1964, there was hold me, throw me, kiss me, you know. And then there was a, uh, a string of records after that. Hold me, throw me, kiss me. All of a sudden, my heart sings. You, you, you. Uh, take good care of her. Um, band of gold. Uh, and it, on and on and on. And then we went from there into, in those days when you had records and uh, stuff, they, the, the natural thing was to put you into film or put you into television shows. And uh, that was the natural progression for me. And uh, we've done stage. I've done just about every... I think you told me you were in a soap opera. Yes, yes. I was on uh, Santa Barbara. I played Cruz's partner for like two years. Wow. I, I do also remember the story on the very first interview we had, and uh, you, you went in, and I, I, I had asked you, I said, how was it, or what was it like to record Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me? And you, and I, and I do remember this vividly, and you had said, I'll never say this again anywhere, but you hated the song. I did, but there was a reason. You know why? Because I thought I was a jazz singer. So everything that I sang, I held, I hooked and held back behind the beat and everything like that. When we did Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me, I was in the studio and I had to be directed to sing on the beat with the choir. The only time I could have any freedom was in the bridge uh, where you could uh, be by yourself and then, you know, like just mellow out. But then other than that, you had to sing exactly on the beat. It was... You know, so I hated that. Me, I didn't hate the song, but I hated that, that they uh, put me into the, uh, the pop genre of music. Wow, that's a new one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you invent that? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, you know, like, I thought I was hip. I thought I was hip, you know, before we, we did that kind of, we did uh, Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me, and all of us admire some heart sings and all of those things. That's but the I've learned that uh, it's a signature song, and I appreciate doing it each night, and what makes it different is that each audience makes it different for me because I have to make it new for them, you know? In what respect? How, how do you make it new? Now, I saw you on the PBS special, mm -hmm. which you went ab way above and beyond the original recording, but what do you do that makes it now personalized to wherever you go? It, it's, it's the people. 
it's it's the energy from the audience, from the fans or people. What they give me, you know, it it comes across the footlights, hits me. I give back to them, and then and, and it's a, a it's a give and take thing. So each audience makes it new, you know, or different. You know, so that it's not like, oh, I don't want to sing this song because I've done it, you know, over and over and over. The people who come to see you make the difference in how you give to them. The gentleman that's with me, uh, Bobby Hepburn, he has his own doo-wop group called Desire here in the Lehigh Valley, very popular, and does many, many gigs, and uh, I am sure he feels the same way because every audience is different. Sure they are. And again, the energy, and I can see that as just a person that knows the music industry, I can't sing to save my life, but I can see it when I'm in the audience, how everybody reacts uh, differently uh, as per se the, the concert before. Right, and, they, and, and, and when you're on stage, you can feel that energy. Oh, no doubt. Feel Mel that energy and that, that the coming, it's like a, um, how can I explain that? You know when you're sitting by the pool and then there's a warm, uh, uh, Breeze, right? Not the cold breeze, but the warm breeze. That's that kind of energy that comes across, you know, from that audience. And then you, you, you can't do anything else but respond and give it back to them. Wow. Um, when was there a role model you had growing up? And saying he was well, like he was my role model. Obviously, Sam Cooke. But were there any others that you sat back and and just said, "Oh, I wish I could be like him." Eventually, you 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 are and became you. But back in the day, I am sure you you may have had a role model or two. Well, I want to tell you something. Back in the day, when I sang so high that. The, uh, my, I was attracted to the female voices, and uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, voices of all time for me, and I hate to point out, but there are many, many different uh, uh, people, but Dinah Washington was just, she slayed me. She, slayed, she laid me out. You know? she's, she's a fabulous, fabulous voice. Uh, Mel, this is Bobby. I just want to cut in for a second. Um, my wife's favorite song of all time in the history of recorded music is Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me. And she wanted me to tell you that tonight. <laughs> and uh, we do that in our show with Desire. And uh, it always gets a great reaction from the fans. And like, uh, like, you. like you said, Mel, sure. it's thank different. You for me. Please do that. It's different every time we do it, of course. You know, we get different reactions from the fans, like, the, like uh, Ned said. But uh, we're going to be doing that in our upcoming uh, Sands Casino show featuring the great voice of Tommy Zito. He's a legend in uh, the valley here. And uh, honest to God, she told me right before I left to come to the show tonight, you know, tell Mel, please, that's my favorite song <laughs> ever. And it's the truth, it is. Well, thank her for me, please, would you? <laughs> She's listening, so you just did. <laughs> uh, thank you so very much. Mel, I gotta ask you this question. When when you just drive around or wherever your your daily you know routine is and you turn the radio on serious or whatever you listen to and you hear that song hold me thrill me kiss me does it still give you that thrill of hearing yourself i want to tell you something okay when uh, uh when that record hit, I had gone home uh, for a visit back to Cincinnati, and uh, my, uh, some of them from Mickey and John, and they're passed on, they're gone on, but we used to ride around in the car, and every time a record of mine would come on, and when that came on, and it was such a hit, because they were, you know, it was um, probably in rotation or something, we used to get out of the car and dance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and every time I hear that record or a record, I, it brings me back to that time, 
you know, and that was a great feeling. I mean, we, we'd, we'd had people honk, 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 the, the horns and everything like that, but it, it, it's a great feeling. I, you know. It, it, it's still to have me. Have a signature song. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That everybody knows and that when you open your mouth to sing it that they want to sing it along with you and it could and it creates those kind of good memories for them hey i'm blessed man how does it feel to to in your in your in your heart in your soul that so many people probably got engaged over that song, how many people have whispered in each other's ears while they're dancing to your song, I love you, uh, and they hold me and they thrill me and they kiss me. How does that make you feel that knowing millions, not we're not talking hundreds, millions of people around the world have, have danced to that particular song. How does that make you feel deep down inside? makes me feel great and I hope they're still together. <laughs> oh, I, I, I certainly do hope so too. Yeah, and... and uh, uh, you leave it to me to find one of those corny jokes, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay, you're allowed. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know. I, um, the only thing that I can really say is, and, and really from the bottom of my heart, why do people say from the bottom of your heart? Why, you know, why it's, why it's from the left side of the right? Anyway, um, uh, I'm blessed. Uh, like I'm, I said, I'm blessed to have a song like that that can create that kind of atmosphere happening yes. world, you know? And, and boy, you know, when you talk about a signature song. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. Do you realize, do you realize that I, I speak to some of these uh, uh, rock and roll stations, not only to, to friends of mine that have been in the business, I'm in it 49 years now, and, and the, the people that have jukeboxes, do you realize that Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me in 65, was one of the many, many songs that had to be replaced in jukeboxes all across the country almost every three weeks. Uh, no, I didn't know that, but I know that we did have a record that was set for the jukebox uh, things. I have, a, I have a jukebox here in the house called uh, an AM1 mm -hmm. uh, Continental 2. Uh, they only made them in two years. You know the one that looks like the robot? Right, yes. Yeah, and I have that. That's the one that I remember, I, and I got that because of uh, uh, Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me. I, I've had this thing since then. So, so tell me, Mel, that no matter what buttons you push, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me will play. <laughs> 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 so... <laughs> Oh, he took my junk away. Well, there you go. You know what? I'm entitled to a joke. You nailed me, so I got you. Okay, Ned. So, so we're even now. We're even. All right. All right. I had somebody ask me a really different question, and they said, will you, will you ask Mel this? And I said, you know what? After I sat and was talking to my buddy, and he said... Ask him what his fountain of youth is because, you know, the guy's voice is unbelievable. Uh, what does he do to, to keep that same voice? Uh, what do you do? I mean, is there something, is there a fountain of youth that you, you dive into or, or what is it? No, I just think that, that uh, it's a gift that... that uh uh, that God gave me and I try to um, I have vocal exercises and stuff that I do to strengthen the vocal cords uh, uh, and just I don't know I have no I don't have a secret it's just that it's there I, I know that uh, down through the years the the it's given me more body in, in the voice uh, and, and, and it's not as thin as it was when I first started, you know, and not as trebly, treble, you know, it's, it, the bass is, is, uh, 
broadening the whole vo uh, vocal um, range for me right now. Mel, this is Bobby again. I have a question for you. Um, I told you what my wife's favorite song was. Do you have a favorite song of all time or a favorite artist that you uh, really admire? I have several different artists, uh, and, and I got to say that. And when they start, naturally, Dinah Washington was one. Right. Uh, um, so I said once, I went to the Coconut Grove once to see um, Eddie Fisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came out and, and I had an interview and somebody, I said, God, the man is the most powerful performer, one of the most powerful performers I've ever seen. They said, how could it? How could you? I said, you had to have been there. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up, I watched Bing Crosby. Uh, uh, I, I liked Billy Eckstein uh, during that era. You know, I, I've... I've lived through a lot of eras of, uh, of, of people that I admire, but I have to say there was a guy in the uh, 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 in the gospel field who was a crooner, and uh, see, my, all of a sudden my mind went blank. Mm -hmm. It'll come to you that he, he, he was a crooner, and I learned a lot from him. Um, uh, um, I, did I answer? Did I say anything? You, you yeah, did. You did. You, you, did. did. you, you didn't did. tell me your favorite record of all time or your favorite song, but uh, that's okay. My favorite record? Yeah, your favorite oh. song from another artist. Oh, man. Are you kidding? Oh. You know, Mel, people ask me that over the years. You've played so many songs. What's your favorite? And, and you know what I tell them? Every one I play. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I would, have to, I, I would have to go with Nina Simone. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, um, the, uh, oh, the very first song that she, that she made. Uh, she made so many. Now, my favorite uh, uh, is... And I, and, I, and I had the privilege of meeting her. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then we lived in the same building, and we got to be friends. Uh, I, uh, I've enjoyed my association with uh, meeting, uh, meeting and uh, knowing uh, Dionne Warwick. Mm -hmm. uh, um, oh, boy. I thought, you know, they're really tough questions. They are. There are so many because they're, you, as you go through the phases in your life, and I've been doing this for a long time, you meet various people, uh, and I could give you names of people that you would probably never heard of. Little Jimmy Scott. Mm, not that one I don't know. Little Jimmy Scott. Little Jimmy Scott. Imagination. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Look that up sometime. And I, this man has the, you talk about a, a voice that, that never, never got, it, it, he sounded the same way uh, in his 80s that he sounded when he was 16 years old. You know, I, I see that in a lot. The PBS special, uh, you know, there, there were so many. Of course, a lot are gone from the original rhythm and doo-wop. Right. And, but these gentlemen were in their 80s. You, you have, like, even Cleveland Stills uh, still performing. Uh, uh, Willie Winfield. Right. These guys, their voices have gotten better over the years. And, it, it, and I keep telling everybody this, Mel. I said, when, when they come to your area, please take the time and go see them. Because, you know, we're not promised tomorrow. But you really need to go see. If, if all these great artists come to your town, take the time and go see them. My, my group uh, did a show with the Hoptones up in Massachusetts, and I had the honor of meeting and shaking hands and talking to Willie Winfield uh, in person in the dressing room. We shared a dressing room. What a fantastic man and wonderful talent. One of my favorite songs of all time 
is For Your Precious Love by Jerry Butler. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've worked with uh, Jerry, and uh, he's, he's, he's a fan. He's a Mr. Iceman. Yeah, he's yeah. the Iceman, that's for sure. Ice man, yeah. Love that song, and I never get tired of listening to it. A lot of people never get tired of listening to Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss well, Me. Well, for sure. You know? I live with one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize how many people sing along with that song, Mel? I'm glad. You know, uh, when I was in Japan um, oh, a few years ago, one of the things that uh, they knew every word. They knew all the words to every song, uh, at, at the hits that, that I sang. And they sang along with me. And that's really, really, that was great. You and, and uh, uh, Lenny Welsh tour together quite a bit now, and, and we haven't we haven't toured. We uh, what happened? At, and uh, uh, I wrote a show called the Legends of Rock, or Rock and Roll, The Balladeers, and we went to Vegas and did it, uh, and we got a chance to uh, record the title song from it, and uh, Lenny and I are the best of friends and he's like when we get together it's just like bedlam you know b b between the both of us and we tried to put that in to the title song and i think we did a pretty good job of it and did you ever uh, correct me if i'm wrong here I, I i know in our very first interview with you i had said you know mel you really need to do some christmas songs i, I didn't do I did, a, I did a Christmas song with uh, Frida Payne on her, uh, on her Christmas album, and that was a few years ago, uh, called Oh Holy Night and Silent Night. Uh, that's the only Christmas music that I had, I've ever done. And then uh, on the new album, uh, uh, Mel Carter Continues, we pulled or, or, or sent out, uh, he's got the whole world in his hands uh, at Christmas time. Mel, let's talk about your brand new song that you have out. Take me right from the beginning, uh, who wrote it, uh, how were you approached to do it, uh, give everybody all the info. I have a, uh, um, a, a friend of mine then, uh, who, um, Alex Gerber, he's Alex Gerber Jr., but now it's just Alex Gerber, and he was a poet, and I, he showed me his book of poetry, and we started talking back and forth, back and forth, and then I looked at the lyrics to Raise the World, Sing Louder Than the Gun, and uh, we started exchanging. I said, okay, what do you mean by this? And then I would tell him something, then he would rewrite, rewrite, and uh, he finally came up with the, uh, the whole lyric content of this song, Raise the World, Sing Louder Than the Gun. And uh, the Dennis Weaver and I can't think of uh, the other lady. They adopted the song, uh, and, and originally they had 20, 30 artists uh, to come in, and it was for Feed the Children, right? And I. I do believe because of the because of the song was raised the world. It was too much like we are the world, mm -hmm. right? But right. so <clears throat> my my recording of it is raise the world, sing louder than the gun. That's the title, you know. Uh, I I believe in this. It's an anthem, uh, and I'm very excited about this. I I, I just think that that when the people hear this or if enough people hear it I'm, I'm sure we can make a difference we can make this world better than what it is you know you know mel as i sat and listened to the song over and over and over in my man cave and i had it so loud that my wife pounded on the floor and she said turn it down <laughs> and i i sat there and i said you know this message is so powerful. We need to go backwards mm -hmm. to start frontwards again. And by what I mean by that, let's go back to the 50s when there was a, a, 
a time where the violence, the guns, you know, they were used to go hunting. Uh, today, it's, it's all you hear every day on the news, this, that. Uh, you know, it, it, it just breaks my heart to hear all this, this craziness. And the song, and this song is so powerful that I said, you know what, we really need to go backwards to go frontwards again. The, our, we meant that raise the, now this may be a simple thing, right? Raising the world's consciousness. Now there, you know, like there may, there's various languages and everything when, uh, you know, from different cultures, but when they all get together, they sing, they sing. We can all sing together. You can learn a song and sing it phonetically and everything, and it's all oneness, okay? So we can. What we're saying is raising our consciousness that we can have a voice that will outdo any guns. And I agree with Bring you. Bring this world together. Absolutely. When you talk about the 50s, the 50s, there was simplicity in the music. You know, you didn't have to wonder about what people were talking about. And it was all about love. Exactly. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I, I keep saying over and over and over again, you know, I, maybe in our next life, uh, hopefully it'll be as simple as the times we were raised. And, you know, going back to you starting in gospel, and that's what our parents taught us. They're, our parents went to church. You went to church. Yeah. And you started singing your gospel music. You know, we sang, I sang in the choir, believe it or not, as horrible as I sound. But, you know, back in those days, and I was, a, I was an altar boy, but it was a much better time because our parents, they, were, they had to go to church. So they passed it down. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, an actual comeback uh, with parents now taking their children to church. Yeah. Uh, and that to me, and, and my kids are the same. Of course, you know, they go through that period where, you know, I, I'm busy, yada, yada, yada. I went through it, and I'm going to be very honest, I went through it. Sure. And now as we get into our golden years mel uh, we start looking back at that and and all of a sudden now we start thinking you know what our parents were right sure you know and it, it's you know, this 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 song is so powerful uh you know it, it, it's great and and your voice is is just as powerful as the uh, the message in the song. Well, it, I'm 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 just thankful. I'm thankful that uh, I've been allowed to uh, keep uh, the vocal ability that I have uh, all these many years, and hopefully, I will continue uh, on. And uh, I, I, what can I say? I, I love this song. So if you were talking about my favorite song of, of all time right now, this is it. <laughs> well, that's that's well, that, interesting. That's that, great. That is. That is. <clears throat> and, and it's so good that you, you believe in it so much. Mm -hmm. And it shows. It, 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 well, it doesn't show, but it sounds it in the song. Uh, you know, people can sing a song uh, and, okay, I did that song. But you can hear the difference in a voice if somebody believes yeah. in the song. You know, it, it, you talk about some of my favorite singers. Uh, one comes to mind, uh, you know, he, he toured with uh, Gaither, a guy by the name of David Phelps. Mm hmm yes. I don't know if you ever heard of him or... I, sure I do. That man's voice, and I saw him twice in concert, Christmas concert, that man's voice is, it's like yours. It's unmistakable. 
when, when Mel Carter sings a song, it's him. When David Phelps sings a song, it's his voice. Right. It, 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 it's unbelievable. And, and I love listening to his gospel music. And, and just his, his way of doing things. So, there, it, it is what it is. And, you know. It was an easy transition from gospel to, you know, like uh, uh, the songs that we sing, our love songs to God. You know? mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and to, to move out of that, that arena over into this arena, and we're still singing. I love love songs. I think that, uh, uh, I don't think there's any greater thing that you can do except to uh, be in love. And, and, and you know what, you and your wife, you guys and your wives, that's beautiful. Exactly. Thank you. And, and, and we feel that way. You know, we do. We feel that way. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing that so many people have, have uh, loved, hold me, thrill me, kiss me, uh, take good care of her. That's another one of my... Uh, fine examples of your singing. Uh, crying in the chapel that you did. Wonderful love. Uh, Those are all great songs that you recorded and sang, you know. And the Band of Gold, uh, uh, an, another great one. And, and I see Sandy Patty uh, did a song with you as well. Right. We did a, a do it. What was that song? Huh. Oh, let me see here. Sandy Patty and Mel Carter, you, that's all I can, uh, that's the beginning of the... Never Walk Alone. Yep, yeah, You Never Walk Alone, there you go. Another, Johnny Maestro did that as well. Mm -hmm. Another one of my favorites. Did you ever share the stage with Elvis Presley? No, but I will tell you that uh, I used to get Christmas cards from uh, Elvis because he liked When a Boy Falls in Love. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes, he wanted to do it. He never did it, though. He and Sam were very close. No, no. But he used to send me Christmas cards. You know, uh, and he really liked that song. A lot of people don't know when a boy falls in love. Uh, Hold me, thrill me, kiss, kiss me overshadows that. Yeah. But I'm going to play that tonight so these people can hear everything. And, and, and the, the, the beautiful sounds and, and, and your voice and everything like that. Um, I still can do that, so I sing that song in the same key. Really? Yeah. I have a, a, a young lady that sings with, or yeah, sings with me that, that co-hosts my Wednesday night show. She also belongs to Desire. Um, she is a young gal, 28, knows all these old songs knows them to a T without even having to look at a cheat sheet or whatever. Her voice is just about unbelievable. Uh, she's been nominated for Lehigh Valley uh, Female Awards. And she's young. She's 28. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give somebody that age to become part of the business that you're in? I, I would say um, just believe in what you're doing, you know, and make what you're doing believable. She does that. <clears throat> she does all of that. When we sing on stage, no matter where we are, mm -hmm. she has, you know, we're, we're all older gentlemen in the group, and we contacted her and she decided to join us and it was one of the blessings in my life right. because she does know all the songs from her parents and grandparents and when she's on stage she has become a performer not only a singer but a performer and she lights up the stage and people love her you know a lot of people uh, uh, think that the audience are uh, that when they come to see them that they are not aware but I've had uh, people remember one night when I put on the wrong socks or I had uh, I did I had cotton socks on with with the tuxedo instead of you know the uh, silk right and peep a lady came up to me and said you wore some cotton socks she told me that 
which means, which tells me that they are, they are in with you 250%. Without a doubt. <laughs> uh, they know everything. And, and, uh, and that's why what I said is making it believable because if you, if you look to change anything, then when you change it, you better believe in that change where they will accept it because that's going out. And, that's, and they have to receive it. When they receive it, then they'll give you that energy back. You know, she came to me at rehearsal one time, Mel, and wanted to do Remember Walking in the Sand. And she sang it at rehearsal. And I said, stop right now. Go home, and I want you to believe in it. I want you to show it. I want you to be like Tina Turner when you deliver this song. Be a performer. And she looked at me kind of funny, and I said, no, anybody can sing. I want you to perform this on stage like you own it. And she came back the next week, and uh, Ned will tell you, every time she sings that song, she kills it. Well, see, that's, that's the point. You have to, have to believe in what you're doing. And I will tell you this, Mel. I, I, it was Christmas 2017, no, 16. I asked her, I said, hey, Kristen, how would you like to go on TV with me? And she says, well, I don't know, you know. I says, listen, I said, you don't see your audience. Yeah, but I know they're out there. <laughs> and I said to her, it's, it's going to be fun. And then she said, Ned, let's really make this fun. And the genre of music that we do, now last night we had hippie night, so we dressed the part. And, and we play the songs of, of the hippie era. Uh, she dresses, during her British invasion shows, she dress, dresses like a 14-year-old, uh, you know, young English lass that's going to school. Uh, when we do disco night, uh, she dresses, and, and, and I do the same. I mean, we dress the, the era of the music. When we do a sock hop malt shop, uh, she dresses the poodle skirts, I dress the soda jerk. I look like a soda jerk. And we've done that all year, practically every Wednesday, we do something totally different. And believe this or not, Mel, we got voted as the top internet cable uh, TV personality. We won at the Lehigh Valley Music Awards. And what a great, great addition to my show after 49 years, finally. <laughs> and, 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 and we got recognized in, uh, amongst our peers, and it was so great to hear 400 people clap for us, you know, at the awards dinner. And I was just so very proud of her because she brought youth to this older music Mm -hmm. by dressing the part mm -hmm. and saying, let's dress the part, Ned, Let, let's do that. Yeah. And it really works in, in old country. When we, she dresses up like, a, like an old cowgirl, and I, you know, of course, we do all oldies country from the 50s, 60s, and the 70s. And we even go back into the 30s and 40s, you know, uh, Lulu Bell and Scotty, uh, the original uh, Sweethearts of the Rodeo. Yeah. And, and it is so much fun. She brought so much youth back to this. And, and I've thanked her so many times on stage, you know, that, that we got ourselves together to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and so much fun. And it showed. I mean, it paid off. Our, it, it's a fan-based uh, uh, voting. And, and you must love what you're doing. You know what? After so many years, I got kind of tired of it. And when she came aboard, and now I, I am so looking forward to every Wednesday, yeah, see. because now it rejuvenated me. Mm -hmm. Now the music always rejuvenates me every time I, I turn on 60s on 6, where, you know, from Sirius or the 50s. Right. But now to replay it, that I've done for the last 49 years, has made it totally different because now we dress the part. She has that personality that, <clears throat> that people love. And, you know, she, she doesn't realize how many people watch us. 
And I said to her, uh, a prime example, I was at a diner my, where my daughter works, and we're sitting at a table having breakfast and uh, the, the party next to it, and went to my daughter and says, listen, could you ask that guy over there if that's uh, uh, the guy that's on TV with that young girl that they do those oldies and stuff? And my daughter says, yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's the guy. I said, you know, she said, yeah, he's my dad. <laughs> So that that kind of and, and they came over. It broke the ice. They came over and said, "Oh my God, she is so cute!" and 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 they you guys dress up so much. We just enjoy watching it, and 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 they enjoy the music again. So that's, that that's the thing is that and you can bring that kind of light and happiness and uh, uh, make a person smile and bring that into their lives, you know? And then we can forget all this other stuff that's happening, see? But we can make a change. Yes. Doing that, we are doing that. The music is doing that. And you know, the, the thing about music, it can transcend you to any time that that music represents uh, uh, for you when you hear it. Is that our generation, Mel? I think it's, it, well, it, it has to be because I, much of the music today, I don't know how they're going <laughs> to... I totally agree with you. You have to say no more. I, I understand it. I understand it. my daughter said, you know what, Dad, Poison and Def Leppard are now oldies. And I, I sit there and I shake my head. Uh, I... I, I... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know exactly what you're saying. The music of today, uh, I don't know. There is some really good singers out there. What I think is 50 years from now, you're not going to be hearing what you're hearing today. Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me is going to stand the test of time. That's going to be played forever. I think, a lot of, you know, songs like Over the Rainbow. Songs like, right, absolutely. Uh, um, those uh, kinds of songs, they're going to be, they're going to be, around. somebody's going to test them always, you know. Singing in the rain. Yeah, that's yeah. Cla that was before my time, and still, they play it today, I love it. I like the ink spots, Mel. Uh, the ink spots, uh, the, um, if I didn't care. Right, Bill Kenny, yep. I just had uh, a cover record of the year for, uh, for uh, my version of uh, If I Didn't Care. Great song. Yeah. I also love to, to listen to Franz Schubert. I love, uh, you know, Beethoven. I, I love that music. My wife just shakes her head and says to me, what? I love Bing Crosby. <laughs> exactly. Oh, truly, I love Bing Crosby. I, yeah. love, Frank, I love Frank Sinatra. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can learn from a lot of people if you take that time to listen. Uh. You know what was really cute? Uh, we had uh, uh, Randy Cifudo from Randy and the Rainbows. You know, his signature song, of course, uh, is Denise. There was a rap star that decided, I'm going to put Denise to a rap. And believe it or not, Mel, it really didn't sound bad. And, and Randy, well, his real name is Dominic, and he had said that I give him my blessing with it, you know, that they would choose a song like that and turn it into something a little different, obviously, well, a lot different than, than what was originally done in 1963. Mm -hmm. It was different, it was cute, but will it test the time? No. Denise will, hold me, thrill me, kiss me. I could never see in any other version that the way it's done now. Or the way you did it, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day. And it, it's so good. Uh, Mel, you know, it, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Every time we're on, it's... You always come up with a, 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 one of those just great stories. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, you, ought to, uh, you, you started the story with your socks. And on some of your pictures, your socks are just really a good marketing thing. I, 
Well, you know, you know how the Sox, uh, here's another story, how they came about when, uh, as an actor, uh, when we used to go in for uh, uh, auditions, there was this casting director, I can't think of her name, but she never looked up, never looked up. She listened to you and everything, but she never looked up. And I started wearing different socks, you know, different color socks and everything like that. So I said, well, if, you, if you're going to look down, at least you're going to remember one person. It, uh, out of all of the white socks and black socks that would come in, a color would be, well, let's get that guy with the color socks. Really? Good marketing. It, this is, that's... Well, everything, here we go, true story. No, but I cannot think of her name, but that was one of the, that's when it started. Uh, was it the yellow socks? Huh? Was it your yellow socks? <laughs> 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 I love that picture with your yellow socks. That, that to me is, is just one of the coolest pictures. There's Mel Carter. I think you had, you, you had your album there. Uh, or Mel Carter continues. And there are the yellow socks. <laughs> you know, we do the same in Desire. If you remember Northampton, their colors are black and orange. And we came with our orange socks on. Mm -hmm. And we took a picture of us sitting on the stage and made sure that the orange socks. It's a good marketing tool. People remember. That right, Mel. They remember the socks that you wore, if nothing else. And there you go. There's your story, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> See, we trade off. We trade off. There is one. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Such a good time tonight. Thank you so much, Mel, for joining us. Thank you. Thank and, you. And, and I'm going to play your, your, your brand new song one more time. What is the, the, the title? Raise the World, Sing louder than the gun all Love right title. we're going to do that thank you mel so much for joining us uh, god bless you I, I hope you have excellent health for the rest of your life you continue to sing the songs that have tickled our ears over the years and uh, it, it's so enjoyable talking to you and this song i know will will be number one. Thank you, Mel, from my thank wife's you. favorite singer. Thank you, Mel. And, and thank your wife. I will. And go Cavs. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get that in there, didn't you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I like the Sixers, my friend, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Mel. You take care. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. Take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.